More than 3.5 million refugees have now fled Ukraine. Others have moved west within the country, including about half of the country's parliament members. Our next guest is one of Ukraine's parliament members, Andre Osachuk. Andre, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Um, I want to bring up something that you've said. You've said Russia's war is not with Ukraine, but rather with the West and NATO allies. Can you explain what you meant? Hello there. Thank you for having me here. First of all, I will start with with small comments. Just a couple of minutes ago, you presented me like one of the refugee. Uh, I'm not a refugee. I am inside of Ukraine. Moreover, yesterday I was participating in the official meeting of the parliament. It was the third meeting of the parliament since February 24, when all Ukrainian parliament gathered together inside of the House of Ukrainian Parliament in the center of the Kiev, where we adopted a number of dramatically important regulations which needed for Ukraine to operate uh, when the country in the state of war. So that's why all Ukrainian politicians are here. When you speak about refugees, we are taking out of the country women with kids and babies and older people. So among these uh, 3.5 millions of people, I think 70, 75 percent, it's uh, kids, babies uh, and women, and the rest is older people. All men and all of the, all of the politicians inside of the country. Second, coming back to your question. Uh, look, the details are hardly visible from big distances. And Europe is quite far from U.S. Ukraine is very far and Russia very far. And uh, in fact, you used to say that devil in detail. And during many years, the Ukraine was uh, warring uh, the West that Russia is a huge threat. It's a devil. It may bring huge damage to all the world. And finally, only now, all you see what it is. But during decades, Russian television, which is, in fact, the propaganda of Kremlin, was openly threatening West, was openly threatening Europe and United States. Moreover, you know that during last decade, they were conducting a hybrid warfare against the West. So they were interventing into elections in the United States. They were killing people in Great Britain and in Europe. They were blowing up the military warehouses in, Ch in Czech Republic. So they were doing this during years and now when they start the war against ukraine they openly said that they see ukraine as a threat because ukraine wants to join nato and they are afraid of nato that's why they will attack ukraine all this paranoid logic of mr putin is mostly because of one thing they afraid nato they afraid united states and they start attacking ukraine Interesting. I want to ask you about the weapons that you guys have and need. Um, a, do you have the weapons that you need? And B, um, are you getting what you need from your NATO allies in the U.S. to fight back? Very good question. Thank you very much. First of all, what we need, we have. We have extremely brave and bold Ukrainian people, extremely well-prepared Ukrainian army, which is able for one month to defeat Russians on Ukrainian land. For today, we shut down more than 100 uh, Russian jet fighters, 123, if I'm not mistaken, attacking helicopters, 500, almost 50 Russian tanks were burned in Ukraine, and so on, so forth. So we're delivering huge damage to Russia on the ground. And we're doing this mostly because of extremely good support, which we already received, from United States and from our NATO allies. But it's understood that we are on the early stage of this war. Russians, they don't have plan B, so they will continue to use all Russian resources to have a victory in Ukraine, which is, by the way, impossible for them. They already lost. Now only the question of the price of our victory. To receive this victory and to reduce the price in human killing, definitely we need more resources from the West. Uh, unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, I shall not describe details because recently we approved the law which prohibits distributing of information about our uh, about the help which uh, West is giving to us because we want Russian to know what kind of weapons we have on the battlefield. Uh, even it's better if they will uh, know that after uh, the the battlefield. But definitely, we need more assistance in protection of our air. We need anti-air uh, uh, missile system. Definitely, American javelins are working extremely good in Ukraine. So the, the efficiency of this uh, missile anti-tank system is uh, 
very good. But uh, again, we burned already more than 550 tanks. Almost uh, most of them were hit by uh, javelins or uh, UK and low uh, system. We need more and more of them because Russians for today, they definitely have a problem with uh, soldiers and with people with, uh, who will fight in the territory of Ukraine. But they have a lot of uh, military equipment, tanks and armored machines, aircraft and so on and so forth. They will continue to send everything what they have to Ukraine. So if the civilized world wants uh, the Russian evil to be stopped in Ukraine, uh, we need weapons. We will fight. We know how to do that. So from you, we need weapons and economical blockade. You can kill Russia economy by economical sanction. Each dollar which is going to Russian economy is a fuel for the war. It's a fuel to kill our mm. people and probably other people of Europe. Because again, Putin and his ducks are threatening, openly threatening Poland, Lithuania, Baltic republics, and they already said that we will conquer Ukraine and we will go further to the West. We shall stop them here, and the only way how to stop them here is to beat them. And it is possible. We will do that with our hands, but we need your maximum help for that. Okay. Andre, we are honored to have you here this evening, and everyone is in awe of the Ukrainians' resolve um, against this unprovoked war that Russia is having on you. Thank you for your time, and our prayers are with you.